The final topic that we are going to be covering with regards to op amps is the concept of cascaded op amp circuits. A cascaded op amp circuit is simply a circuit that contains multiple operational amplifiers that are chained together. And we can analyze them in a number of different ways. I'm going to talk about two ways that we can do that today. So let's consider the circuit that we have here, where we have this amplifier, which I'm going to call A1, is chained to this amplifier, A2. We've applied an input signal of 2 volts to amplifier A1, and we're trying to measure the output voltage at the output pin of amplifier A2. We're first going to analyze the circuit by applying our ideal op amp rules. So this current, I plus 1, will be 0 amps. This current, I minus 1, will be 0 amps. This voltage, V plus 1, will be 2 volts. And this voltage, V minus 1, must then also be 2 volts. For our second op amp, I plus 2 must be 0, I minus 2 must be 0. Since no current can flow through the 7 kilo ohm resistor, V plus 2 is going to be 0 volts, and our voltage here V minus 2 will also be 0 volts. So, I'm going to label some nodes. I'm going to call this node A, this node B, this node C, and this node D. If we apply Kirchhoff's current law at node A, where we sum this current, this current, and this current, we get VA minus zero divided by three kilo ohms plus our current direct to the right is zero amps plus VA minus VB divided by five kilo ohms is equal to zero. If we try to apply KCL at node B, we're going to run into a little bit of a problem. The current flowing up is well defined, the current flowing to the right can be described using our normal voltages, but the current flowing into the output terminal of our op amp, we have no way to quantify that in terms of our nodal voltages. What we're going to find is that we can never actually perform Kirchhoff's current law at the output of an operational amplifier when we're using uh, the ideal op amp model. And it's because we don't have any relationship that tells us how much current flows in or out of the output terminal. So instead, we'll move along to node C, and we'll be summing these three currents, So we'll have VB minus VC divided by 10 kilo ohms plus 0 amps plus, sorry, that should be VC minus VB.
plus VC minus VD over 8 kilo ohms is equal to zero. And again, we can't do KCL at node D because it's the output node. So our other relationships that we are going to have to do, we have four equations and two unknowns, is we're going to have to use our voltage relationships that come from applying the ideal op-amp model. So the voltage, excuse me, the nodal voltage at node A must be two volts. Because if there are two volts applied at the non-inverting input terminal, that same two volts appears at the inverting input terminal. Similarly, node VC has a voltage of zero volts. If we solve these four equations simultaneously, what we find is that VA is equal to 2 volts, VB is equal to 16 thirds of a volt, VC is equal to 0 volts, and VD is equal to negative 64 over 15 volts. Now, as it turns out, there's actually a much simpler way to get these exact results. Our second method for analyzing cascaded op-amp circuits is to divide them up into stages. So I'm going to have this purple line which separates amplifier stage 1 from amplifier stage 2. Now, if we were completely ignoring amplifier stage 2, and simply looking at what's going on in amplifier stage 1, we should easily be able to determine that stage 1 is a simple non-inverting amplifier, where our output voltage, which I'm going to call this VA1, is given by 2 volts, our input voltage, multiplied by a factor of 1 plus R2, which is 5 kilo ohms, divided by R1, which is 3 kilo ohms. So that would be 2 times 8 over 3 is 16 thirds of a volt. That answer exactly matches what we found for the nodal voltage VB uh, doing the problem uh, using nodal analysis. Now, this voltage of 16 thirds of a volt is the input voltage for the second stage. In our second stage, we see that we have um, a voltage present at this node and that voltage is going to get passed through this 10 kilo ohm resistor, which is connected to the inverting terminal. So stage two is an inverting op amp. Okay. So what we'll find is that V out, the output at stage two, is our input voltage from stage one, 16 thirds of a volt, multiplied by the gain of an inverting amplifier, which is negative R2 divided by R1 or negative 8 kilo ohms divided by 10 kilo ohms. So that is, let's see, 64 times 2 is 256 divided by 30 is negative 64 
sorry, 64 times 2 is 128 divided by 30, negative 64 over 15 volts, which again agrees with our output voltage for our previous analysis. So we can choose to use either of these methods or actually mix and match. If you can identify a portion of an op-amp circuit to be a particular type of um, commonly used amplifier topology, then you can isolate that bit because you understand how it works and simply use your nodal analysis techniques and things like that to analyze the part where you're unsure how it behaves.